Alright, um, this is Darkest Dungeon. It's <clears throat> just some recording of me playing Darkest Dungeon. Uh, so, this video is just me talking about the latest delay of. Um, Mighty Number Nine. Um, as the title placard says, um, I'm quoting something that. Uh, Hideki Kamiya said about uh, when they when he was questioned about um, Keiji and Fune, he said, "Well, he's a businessman," <laughs> um, and that's I mean. That's not necessarily a compliment. <laughs> um, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm making this video is because at this point, like, I can't really, I can't continue to just stand by and watch this bullshit go on any longer. Um, the man is a, uh, he, he's a fraud. Okay, the man is, is a fraud. Um, he's continuously released, um, like, he, the man has made, uh, has essentially had three projects that he's claimed he's, he's supposed to be making, yet we've seen nothing about them. Um, the first one was... Um, the, fir the first one was, um, Kao, Kao, King of Pirates, um, and that has done nothing. Um, that was, that was an announced in 2011, which was slightly, I think, a little bit before the release of the, uh, of the uh, 3DS, it was supposed to be on the 3DS and the Wii, and that didn't come to fruition. That was uh, basically canceled after being in development hell for three years. And that game, um, Marvelous Entertainment was the publisher for that game, which means they put money into it being made, and they spent 461 million yen, which is around 3.8 million dollars let's just say four million dollars um to put that in perspective and i'm gonna get real here um it costs me about eight hundred thousand dollars within a fiscal year um that's how much money i have to revenue i have to generate okay in order to uh In, in order to uh, break even, in order for everyone to get paid and uh, everything like that, that's how much revenue I have to generate every year with my three establishments. 800000 Okay? So basically, this dude. This dude lost four million, uh, 3.8 to $4 million of, um, of these people's money. And it's done. It, it hasn't done shit. So essentially, these are the these are the games that uh, has that his company Comcept has under its belt. Now some of these have not come out. Uh, Sweet Fuse at Your Side, which was done with in conjunction with Idea Factory. Soul Sacrifice, which was done with Marvelous and uh, Sony Sony Computer Entertainment Japan. Um, Guild O2 Bugs vs Tanks, which was basically like a like a, 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 a like a special project with various developers making little like indie games on uh, the 3DS when it first came out. Uh, Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z, which was a flop, um, that was done in conjunction with Team Ninja and Spark Unlimited. Soul Sacrifice Delta, which was a sequel done on the Vita, like the other Soul Sacrifice. That was done with Marvelous AQL and S and Sony uh, Computer Entertainment uh, Japan. Mighty Number no. Nine, which has been delayed multiple times, Recore, which is not out yet, and Red Ash, which uh, failed to reach its Kickstarter goals. So basically, 
most of the games that these people have made, they've done in conjunction with another team. And... And two of them were flops. Yeah. So, essentially speaking, we're dealing with a dude who just has made a ton of, uh, who's been uh, scamming people. Now, I'll leave a link in the description field of where you can get this information, but uh, cow, uh, cow or Kale was supposed to be, um, like, kind of like uh, a Dragon Ball Z-esque thing, but, uh, it, 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 like I said, he wasted, uh, four million of this, of this dude's, of Marvelous's money. Uh, <laughs> which, I mean... I mean, you know, three years and you've produced nothing. Like, there was never, I've never seen a demo of it. I've seen uh, some stills of concept work, but. Yep, yep. Dude's a fucking phony. But, anyway. So essentially, this dude wasted Marvelous's four million of Marvelous's money. Which, to put it in perspective, I could have basically, <clears throat> I could have basically um, kept my business running without any customers at all for three years, for three plus years and several months, with the amount of money this fucker wasted. But I digress. Um, so I mean, this is KJ and Afune. The man is a fraud, and he, he needs to he needs to he needs to go away. But it gets worse because um, I think I know where all this money has been going. Um, basically, they gave KJ Afune three point eight million dollars over three plus three years and some months to make Cal, which you know never saw the light of day, and it was only on two systems. <clears throat> Everything else that he's released that has come out um, relatively well uh, from since he's left uh, Capcom was done in concert with someone else. When it was his studio doing it by itself, it, it flopped miserably. So, I mean, you know, I mean, it's just a lot of phony shit going on. A lot of phony shit going on. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through it. Uh, essentially speaking, um, for those of you who who uh, may or may not know this, um, in if you ever if you ever have read a, a Sir Arthur Conan Doyle Sherlock Holmes mystery or anything like that, you'll hear Sherlock Holmes always talk about deductive reasoning and um, <laughs> how. If you if you if you take all the information that you know and use that in order to to, uh, to 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 take away what is it absolutely impossible, whatever you have left with, no matter how impro improbable, must be uh, the cause. Now, um, you've probably heard that many times if you watch those types of uh, 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 fictional. Um, trade paperbacks and animated series and movies and TV shows. Well, I'm here to burst your bubble. That is not the description of deductive reasoning. That's actually the description of inductive reasoning, um, <clears throat> which is actually more accurate than deductive reasoning. Um, inductive reasoning is where you take everything that you know, um, even that which um, that can be proven to, to, to be true, and Basically, you you use that knowledge in order to come to a conclusion. Um, it's more accurate than deductive reasoning because deductive reasoning can actually be false, um, very false, can lead to some very awkward um, uh, conclusions. So let's take what we know. This man has had multiple projects that um, have have failed or have been really shady. Um, he took a massive amount of money from a, from a, from a company, um, and produced nothing over three years. During those three years, he made a lot of other shit for other developers, though. Um, 
but in conjunction with other um, uh, for, uh, for other with other studios so essentially um, here's my theory I think that KG and Afune took um, I think he took the money from the Kickstarter just like he took the money from Marvelous and produced like little benchmarks that were just some thrown together shit to get Marvelous off his ass for another year and then he basically took that money and used it on other projects and I think that's what he did with the Mighty Number no. 9 money I think he made his little concept pitch um, demo for Microsoft using the Kickstarter funds and I think that's the reason this game is being delayed so much now is this is this fact well you know I, I, I don't have a man on the inside but damn sure makes sense <laughs> I mean you know people could say well it's the net code ah, I don't think that's the case <laughs> I really don't think that's the case. I really don't think the the lack of netcode is the case. I think there's some other shady shit that went on. I think the resources that should have been spent on this game getting made were put into other projects, and I think that's the reason that uh, that this game has been delayed four times now. Because remember, Mighty Number no. Nine was supposed to come out last year. And I don't mean around Christmas. It was supposed to come out last year around like E3, and then they pushed it back to fall, and then they pushed it back uh, to December, like t like the beginning of winter, and then they pushed it back this time to Feb to uh, again to February uh, 9th, and they pushed it back again to some unspecified time in spring. Um, this man is a fraud. Um, if I were if I were you I wouldn't if I were you a consumer I wouldn't give this fucker any of my money because fuck him and concept um, nothing nothing that this man has been paid to produce has come out yet um, except for things that um, he made in conjunction with other studios where they probably had someone who was looking at him and kept his ass on t his ass on task but everything else that he was that his studio was making alone has not been created yet um mighty number no. nine hasn't been created cow hasn't been created um you could say gun vault but gun vault was a gun vault was a little bonus feature from reaching a certain milestone during the mighty number no. nine kickstarter it was not something that they went out their way to make and his team didn't even make it nt creates made it so yeah i just i I'm telling you, KG and Afune is a fraud, and um, don't give them your money. Peace. Well, um, yeah, uh, I forgot this. Uh, basically, um, stay tuned. I'll be releasing some pretty interesting um, stuff later on um, this week. Um, look forward to it. Have some really awesome shit coming out. Um, in preparation for my 99th podcast this weekend this upcoming weekend and uh, I'll be doing another podcast next week um, before Super Bowl on Friday um, so look forward to that um, the podcast this week will be about what is um, you know what are what are some powerful archetypes that we love and wish would continue to flourish in the gaming industry so I'm talking about when I say archetypes I mean like what are like some of the best um, 
like what what are the best RPGs? What are the best uh, video games? What are your, what are your favorite fighting games? Like what are things that you you count on to be what they are, and they're the epitome of a genre for you. Um, not everyone has the same thing. Like for some for some people, the epitome of platformers for them is like could be Commander Keen. The ep epitome of a first person shooter could be Quake or Doom. For some people, it's uh, Duke Nukem. So I mean, you know. <clears throat> that would be what the archetype um, uh, podcast is going to be about. Now, uh, the podcast after that will be on Flip, will be called Flip the Script, and we'll be talking about basically how archetypes change, how things are different. So, with that being said, um, I bid you guys adieu and uh, good night.